welcome back to the Turdford Network. All right, today's video, we are doing a lab in which our purpose is to try and determine the speed of sound. Now, the speed of sound actually varies a little bit with temperature. Now, if you didn't know any better, uh, here's the deal. Speed of sound at zero degrees is 331. So if the lab that you were working in was zero degrees, then your speed should be 331. Well, hopefully the lab you're in was not zero degrees, freezing 331. And so what happens is if you go below zero, then that speed falls. And if you go above zero, then the sound travels faster because the air is vibrating faster. So I'm going to make a rough guess, and we'll do it exactly before this is over. I'm going to guess about 340-ish is what we should be hoping for. Now, I've already went through these numbers a couple of times, and we're getting a little bit of error in them. I had a couple of students do this lab yesterday. Now, normally what we would like to do, we would like to actually do this lab twice, do a position one, do a position two, and then we'd like to take an average of those two positions. Well, in this lab, we didn't have time to do it twice, so we'll just have to take this first position. So what I'm going to do, since I didn't get to do an average, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to mark those two columns off because we didn't do two, so we don't need an average. So I'm just going to mark those out. We're not even going to use them. And now I'm going to come back, and I can look at this first thing. L. So the symbol L up here is 90 minus position. So I'm going to break out my trusty Casio. And so let's see if we can't do this. So for me, my first one, my first one will be 90 minus 82.1. Oops, 82.1. So my first one is 7.9. And I'm just going to go down this entire list right now, this whole list of do this subtracting. So 90 minus 66.8. This is going to get a little boring, but hey, I can't help it. 23.2. And if I can read my own writing, 90 minus 49.9, which really was no sense putting that in the calculator, but hey, it's a video. I don't want you getting lost. Plus, it's also a Friday morning. My brain's finished. 90 minus... 32.6. Hopefully everybody's called on to this because I'm going to quit doing these right now. I'm just going to do the first table, and then the second table works the exact same way. So you can figure out how to do the second table on your own for the 512 port. So here's what I'm going to do next. So I've calculated these positions L. So now I'm going to go through and find these velocities. So I'm going to see if I can't go to a blank page here. And I'm going to go ahead at the top of this page, and I'm going to write sample calculations, calculations. And I'm going to remember to put a name, and I'm going to put a date in the top right-hand corner of this page. Now, the formula we are using looks like this. This is called the formula for a closed pipe. F equals NV over 4L. And you're sitting here looking at this like, I've never used this equation before. Don't worry, you're going to. It's a pretty easy equation to learn. Now, here's the thing. We're not looking for F. We knew what F was in this lab. So what was it that we were actually looking for? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you said velocity, then you got it right. So I'm going to rearrange this equation. I'm going to solve it for velocity. So that means I'm going to multiply both sides by 4L and then get rid of the N by dividing by N. So the equation we're actually going to use is going to look like this. 4LF over N. So here's going to be the equation that I use as I do this lab. 4LF. So V is equal to, so V for my first one would be 4L. My first one, I think it was 7.9. I'm going to go back and look. Yeah. So my first one is 7.9. Four times, oops, now I need to fix something right now. I don't want to use 7.9. I want to go ahead and change this to 0 .079. And that gets me in meters. 
So I'm not going to write 7.9. I'm going to move the decimal twice on my first one so that I have it in meters. I hope everybody picks up on that. And now I'm going to times it by my frequency, which was 1,024 hertz. And I'm going to divide by 1 on my first one. So this is going to be my first speed on my first one. And again, roll the dice. I'm hoping for 340 which I'm probably not going to get because even the cold water would affect this a little bit. Times 079 times 1024. Again, the only thing I did that might be like, hey, what'd you do? I took my 7.9, I moved the decimal twice so that I could work this out in meters. So in theory, I'm going to divide by one, but what's the point in that? So my answer for my first one is 323.5. I'm just going to round it to 324. I'm just going to round all these answers off to three sig figs. So my first one is 324. I'm going to hope, again, 340 is probably more what we should have got for an answer. Now, in theory, for a sample calculation page, you would only have to show somebody how to do this calculation once. I'm going to go sh through and show you how to do it for every trial to make sure somebody knows what we're doing. So that was for the first one. So to do, now I want you to check something out. For the second one, check this out. When you're doing these closed pipes, it doesn't go one, two, three, four. If you notice on your data table, what number did they go in? One, three, five, and seven. So when I'm doing this calculation, my next one's going to be four times, I got to go back, it's 23 point something for me, 23.2. But now let's see if the crowd's paying attention. I'm not going to write 23.2. I want it in meters. So what would 23.2 be? 0.232 times 1,024. But now here's the difference. Instead of dividing by 1 on the second one, I'm going to divide by, bam. And now let's plug that in my calculator. Again, even if you did a horrible job in the lab, you should still be getting 300, hopefully. 289, hopefully 300, though. So I'm going to go back, and I'm going to do my next one. 4 times 0 0.232 times 1,024. This time, though, I'm going to divide by 3, and I got 317 when it's rounded off, which is not quite as good to have 317 on this one. So 317 meters per second for an answer on this one. All right, so now I'm not going to do any more because I hope you figured out how to find these Vs. So the next V would be the same thing, except when you do the next one, you divide by five. Very good. And then when you get that last one, you will divide by seven. So anyway, there's the little pattern that comes out in this. So you should end up with four velocities down through there. So like me, 324, 317. I'm going to go back to that table. And I'm going to see if I can't even, that's not the right table. Ah, here it is. So mine was 324. Then I had 317. And I'm going to go ahead and get some answers in my calculator real quick. 4 times 0 0.401 times, ah, good grief. Come on, 1,024 divided by 5 on the next one. That gives me 328. Hey, that's a little bit better. It's still not right. According to these numbers, I was working in a lab that was below freezing. Well, at least it's, I have nothing to say about that. These numbers are just <laughs> wrong. Uh, let's see. I don't know. Maybe our school is kind of cheap and don't want to pay a heating bill. So let's see the next one. 4 times 0.574 times 1,024 equals divided by 7 this time equals 336. So my last one is actually my best one. I actually went above freezing with that velocity. So 336 on my last velocity. So I went, I got 336 on this one. 
Awesome. So, 336. Now, my next column is just an average. Hopefully, you know how to get an average. I'm going to take these four, add them up, and I'll divide by four. So, for me, 324 plus 317 plus 328 plus 336. Hit equal so I don't screw up my calculator. Divided by four. So my average is 326, which according to this, it was below freezing in the lab. Well, dang it. Oh, well, we still did the best that we could with what we had. Now, I need to do one more calcul. Actually, I got two more calculations to make. So y'all are going to have to bear with me on this. So I need one more calculation, two more calculations here. I've said already the speed of sound should be about 340. Well, let's go figure figure it out exactly. Well, let's see. I know for a fact in the lab that we were doing this in, the temperature in the lab was 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see if we can do a little bit of work here. If it's 70 degrees Fahrenheit, what is that in Celsius? And I'm just going to do this on the bottom of this data table. 70 degrees Fahrenheit, what is that in Celsius? And pretty much you can copy this calculation down because if you were in my school doing this lab, this is exactly what your calculation would look like. So this would be, let's see, F minus 32 times 5 over 9, and that would get us to Celsius. So 70 minus 32 times 5 ninths, what was the temperature of our lab in Celsius. Well, let's see, 70 minus 30 would be 40. 40 minus 2 is 38. So what is 38 times 5 ninths? Well, it looks like the temperature in our lab was 21.1. So 21.1. Now I'm going to do one more calculation on this page. Uh, we could do it on the sample calculation page, but I'm just going to do it here. This is the speed that sound should have been, 0.6 T plus 331. And so what I'm going to do now, 0.6 times 21.1, and we're about to know what your answers were supposed to be, assuming the laws of physics are right. So 0.6 times 20, oops, that's a 3, 21.1. Plus 331 equals, according to this, the speed of sound in our lab should have been 344. Ooh. So this is what our answer should have been, 344. My answer was not 344. My answer was actually, what was it for my first one? 326. Ow. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to do one more calculation now based on that 344. So I'm going to go back to my calculation page. Oh, goodness. I'm getting a very long calculation page. I'm going to see how good I did in this lab. Percent error. E minus A times A times 100. So a percent error is just how you see if you've done the lab right. So for me... E stands for experimental. That's what I got. Mine was 326 minus what it should have been. Well, I just figured out we should have had 344. And, of course, I didn't have 344. Over 344 times 100. If it's within 5%, I shall do a little dance. I'm scared I will not be dancing. I'll probably be trying to think of a source of error. 326 minus 344. Oh, no, it's negative 18. It's absolute values. Don't worry about it. Divide by 344 is, oh, my goodness, times 100. Let the big dog eat. Check this out. 5.2% error. I tell you what, you can't beat the kid. I still got 5%. Okay, 0 0.2 over. But still, that's pretty great results for this lab. I'd like to thank my partners. Actually, neither of them are in this room, so I don't get to thank them. But anyway, if you're watching this video, thank you, lab partners.
5.2 is my percent error. Now, what I want you to do is the exact same thing for the 512 fork. The only thing that changes when you're doing your calculations for table two, you're going to use the exact same equations. If you want this velocity, it's still 4LF over for the first time one. Just make sure of something. When you're doing the 512, when you go 4 times L instead of 1,024, it's 512 on this one down here. Divided by 1 is what you do. And do the same thing. You should have an average. The only thing is your average on the last one's just going to be the average of 3. You don't have 4. And then you do a percent error based on 344. And I'm going to be interested to see which one gave you the best answers in this lab, whether it was the 1024 or the 344. So it's a 15 minute long video already, but let's take a second. You should have a sketch that goes along with your video, and your sketch should look something like this. Make sure when you draw your sketches, again, you always use straight lines. What is this thing? What is this thing? What is that? What is there really wasn't much to this. Uh, you could even draw a picture of a tuning fork if you wanted, but I think most people would know what a tuning fork is. You're probably wondering, what is this thingy up here? It's, I don't know, there's no official name for it. It's just a cup, that's about it. That was a piece of rubber hose. This thing here was a ring stand. And then the thing that actually was worth the most money is what we call water column. So don't forget on your sketch to put your name and your date on that. Uh, I'm going to go through and do one more thing. I'm trying to go fast to wrap this video up. Purpose. Purpose of this lab. The purpose of this lab is to, somewhere you need to say something about find the speed of sound. That was the purpose. On the YouTube video, I'll type all this out. Materials, well, I pretty much just listed them in the drawing. The only thing I didn't put on the drawing was the fact that you had a 1,024 tuning fork and a, oh, you had a 1,024 hertz tuning fork. What else did you have? A 512 tuning fork. Uh, let's see, procedures, that's going to be you. These should not be too hard. So what about the conclusion for this lab? Well, the purpose is I wanted you to find the speed of sound. So how about this? Tell me what you got. The and your percent error. That's what you should do in the conclusion. So like, for example, in this lab that I just did, Mine would be, I found on my first attempt to find speed of sound, I found the speed to be 326 meters per second with a percent error of 5.2. On my second attempt, I found my speed to be blah, 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 with a percent error of blah, blah, blah. But anyway, thank you, love you, peace out, and don't forget, buy stock in Pepsi-Cola. I don't know, I'm just talking. So anyway, it's cold. Bye now.